Hey everybody, we are here at our monthly meetup and we are getting ready to get started. So if you are here, hop on, share with other people and we are gonna go ahead and get started. So, so it's, it's you just going to do it live. Yeah, it's live, so just... <laughs> Again, everybody have a, 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 a ticket? Yeah. Everybody have a ticket? Last call for tickets. And everybody have a folder? There's some folders. But it is a little bit after 12, and I want to be mindful of everybody's time, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. Welcome to our monthly meetup. Um, how many caregivers do we have? How many family caregivers do we have in here? Let's give the caregivers a hand. Y'all are awesome. We appreciate you for what you do. Thank you so much, and that's what the Frankie Mae Foundation is here for. We're here to help care for you all in your everyday journey of being a caregiver. And how many enjoyed lunch? Lunch good? Jennifer DeForest and Vanessa actually paid for lunch today. She sponsored lunch today. So thank you, Vanessa, for sponsoring lunch. And next month, we are having a tea for our monthly meetup. Angela Burroughs will be here speaking um, next month on dementia friendly communities, and we will have a tea, and um, <laughs> Shannon was so excited, she thought the tea was the day, so oh, she dressed up today. I don't wear dresses. Yeah, so, and, and um, if you plan on coming next month, please RSVP, because as you see, we are, it's growing every month, so if you want to come next month, and I limit it because of the space we have and also because of funding. So as we grow, we're gonna, you know, I'm just gonna keep pushing for more donations because the more donations we have, the more caregivers we can serve. So if you if your network of friends just be like, hey, contribute to the Frankie Mae Foundation, they make this happen every month. So just put the word out there, and I'm not going to uh, I'll, I'll put this out here for you all. <laughs> We have our QR codes for donations, so if you're here and you want to donate, by all means, donate so we can keep this going every month. And um, before we get started, I am going to do uh, this again. Last call for tickets because I'm getting ready to do a door prize. We're going to do some throughout the day today. Oh, okay. And Christina has a basket too. All right. So last call because I'm getting ready to pick one. We're going to do probably like three, three or four throughout the day today. So, um, will you, um, take your breath and get big baskets? First prize today, like I said, we're going to do about three or four. Thank you, Vanessa, for donating this beautiful basket. It's the essentials and things that you don't think about when caregivers don't have time to kind of go and pick up those kind of things. I'll uh, clean the supplies. Mm -hmm. oh. <clears throat> All right, so ticket number. Oh, one. Oh, one. <laughs> <laughs> price, price. 766260. So last three, 260. 260, the last three numbers on the ticket. What is it? Two six zero. Somebody has to have Somebody it. Has to have it. Mm -hmm. Two oh. six zero. Last three numbers. Two six zero. Central Lina 
And I am going to take my seat and I'm going to let Katie have the floor. Hey everybody, thank you for having me today. Um, I wanted to talk about two things first. If you don't already have one of these folders, um, come grab one. And that may also, my business card is at the top, which is really the only thing I have to pass out. So if you have one of these, you already have it. But if you need just a business card, I have some. Um, so I talked to Venetra, I guess probably about a month ago, and she came and picked up some supplies, and we talked about the program. So I just wanted to share everybody with, um, you know, a talk about the program, what it is, what options are out there for caregivers. So I work at Central Ina, uh, which is regional government. So if you're familiar with the DS, like Department of Social Services, Council on Aging, in the counties in Mecklenburg and then surrounding, um, we oversee those and some of the programs that go on in there pertaining to older adults. Um, so specifically, I work with the Family Caregiver Support Program, um, which is to support family caregivers. And there's a few different um, kind of sectors to it. Every county has a family caregiver support program within it. So it might be the Department of Social Services, might be the Council on Aging, it kind of depends based on the county, but Central Line also has one. Um, right now, um, we if, if I've talked to any of you on the phone, which is quite possible because Venetia has sent us a ton of people, which is amazing. Um, so if I've talked to you on the phone, I've said, I'm gonna get you on the wait list, so I'll reach out as soon as you can, as soon as I can. And it's not super long. Um, it's me and one other person manning the program right now. So as soon as we have the chance to reach out, we will. Um, and if you're interested, of course, my information is here. So about the program in general, there are kind of two branches to it. And unfortunately, I don't have a demo, so I'm going to talk with my hands and <laughs> not just follow me the best you can. Um, so we have kind of two, two branches to it. One is the respite care. So that's anything that gives you a break. If you have your loved one going to adult daycare, in-home aid, um, but there are a lot of staffing shortages right now. I'm sure y'all run into that. Um, if you're not comfortable with an agency, but you have like a neighbor or a church member or somebody that you want to sit with your relative so that you can leave or take a nap or whatever it is you want to do, um, you can also hire an individual. Um, I can go through the nitty gritty of that if that's something you're interested in, you know, once we talk further about the program. Um, so that's the two parts of that for respite care. That money's pretty flexible, so the total amount that you get under this one and this is all kind of dependent because we're, since we're government, we run off of different funding sources. Right now, the cap is $2,500. So you get $2,500 to go towards respite. For this program, it's a one-time um, <coughs> opportunity. So you do this program once. Once the fiscal year runs out, we go to another program. I can potentially serve you again. Um, or you could go to another one like Project Care, which is similar. Um, so there's kind of a lot of variation in that, but to not get too lost in the weeds there. The other portion, other than respite, so anything giving you a break, is supplemental. There are specific categories that we have to stick to within supplemental, but overall the funds can be pretty flexible. So you have incontinent supplies, if that's something you spend a lot of money on. Um, I had somebody recently that we spent really the total of it. Um, all on incontinent supplies. And so she has like an Amazon warehouse in her garage right now, just full of stuff. Um, but it wasn't for Amazon, it's from Carewell, which is actually like they sell incontinent supplies and they're in Charlotte, which is really cool. Um, but anyways, so we can do incontinent supplies, handyman work, yard work. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think of some other things off the top of my head. TVs, iPads. TVs, iPads, yeah, things to help like reduce social isolation. That was really big under um, CARES funding, which was the Emergency Act from, what year is it? From 2020, from two years ago. Um, and then the one that we'll start using um, again with another Emergency Act is ARPA, which is just different administrations, but same thing. Um, so yeah, anything to help with reducing social isolation caused by COVID, those are things that you know we can always make work for the most part. Um, <laughs> So the supplemental supplies are pretty flexible, but again, things that help you as caregivers, um, things that you find yourself spending a lot of money on, you can take that opportunity to buy things in bulk, buy things, you know, kind of long-term. Um, we just paid for somebody to 
um, have like floors replaced because there's holes in the floor and that's a fall hazard. So as long as we can make it um, make it make sense to the state, we can pretty much buy it as long as it you know is beneficial to the caregiver or the recipient. So um, that is the long and the short of the program. Like I said, there's a lot of other like nitty gritty things within that. But does anybody have questions just based on everything that I've said? That was what the qualifications for? Yes, yeah. thank you. So. Um, <laughs> One is either a diagnosis of dementia or the caregiver be, I mean, the care recipient being unable to complete two out of six activities of daily living. So that is bathing, dressing, using the toilet, um, walking around the home. Um, of course, I always blink on the last two, eating, and then there's one more that I can't remember right now. Um, but the basic things, and that means any kind of assistance. So if your loved one can get in the shower, but you need to hand them things, that's assistance. That's one of the ADLs. So if they can't do it completely independently, that would be a qualification if they don't have a diagnosis of dementia. Um, there's also a sector of it where um, you can do, we can, we can base it on caregiver, which, you know, an older adult, or someone caring for an older adult. Then there's also a portion, we have a few grandparents raising grandchildren. Um, and really the qualifications of that is if the grandparent is 55 and older and they're caring for, I think it's either a child um, under 18 or over 18 with some kind of disability. So um, those, we have those two. And then the other is that you're not receiving ongoing services. So if y'all heard of CAP or the Community Alternatives Program where you're reimbursed to be a caregiver, the wait list is like three years long probably in Mecklenburg County. Um, if you're on something like that and you're getting ongoing support or payment through something, if you're getting adult daycare paid for, if you're getting in-home aid paid for on a continual basis, um, that would count as the duplication of services, so we couldn't do it because those are the state criteria. We couldn't do it with respite. So if you're, for example, receiving ongoing services, you get three days a week at adult daycare. Um, we couldn't serve you with respite care, but we can do supplemental things because that's not they're not paying for your incontinence supplies and those sorts of things. So um, kind of on a you know without spending too much time on that, you can always call and say this is my situation. Does it work? Do I meet the eligibility requirements? And what are my options? And we can go through it. Um, so did that answer eligibility? Any other? Uh, are the income, <coughs> income, no income. income requirements, nope, yep, no proof of income, mm -hmm. nothing like that, um, especially under, I think there might have been previously, I obviously, I've only been there since 2020, so I don't know how it was previously, um, I think there might have been some income requirements, and there are some for other programs, like the in-home aid program, which is separate, um, so there are some for some programs, but not for ours. And can you do Mecklenburg? So would you be in contact with someone for Cabarrus County? Yeah, so we, Central Lina serves the nine nine counties surrounding Mecklenburg, including Mecklenburg. But there are also some, like if you wanted to go through um, Cabarrus Council on Aging, I can't remember if there's a CSS or Council on Aging, but you could also contact someone there. Um, it's just kind of depend on the availability and everything, but I can serve those counties. So that is Lincoln, Anson, Union, Stanley, Mecklenburg, Cabarrus, Iredell, uh, not Catawba, I'm missing one. Gaston. Anson? Gaston. Gaston. Yes, 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 Gaston. Lincoln, yes. is Lincoln? Yes. yes, okay. Yes, and Lincoln. So all of those surrounding Mecklenburg, and um, and I, like I said, there is, you can always call the county. That's what we kind of try to push for, is try the county first. If they can't serve you, or they say have a really long wait list, then call me and we can try to get you onboarded. So um, that's the long and the short of it. I think when right you say now, call the, excuse me, yeah, when you say call the county, what do you, who, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, and I didn't bring, I didn't bring the information, but Again, if you have my business card, you can call me and I can send it to you. Um, or I actually, I mean, now that I'm thinking, I brought my laptop. So if you live in one of those surrounding counties and you want the contact, I can pull up um, our information sheet and give you the phone number. But this is, who am I calling? It would be the Family Caregiver Support Program for that county. Family. Yeah. But Miss, you're in Mecklenburg County. Right. Yes. Yeah. She's in Mecklenburg County. Well, I can give you just one call's phone number, which would be the same. 
Um, and that is, is everybody in here in Mecklenburg County living in Mecklenburg County? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm supporting other families in other counties. Okay, okay. Um, well, just one call is like the main hub for sending people there. Um, and if you want me to rattle it off, go ahead. Okay. okay. Yep, it's 704. 432 1111. Can you repeat that? 704 432 1111. Just one call. Mm -hmm. So they'll route you um, to wherever you need to go. They also handle project care. Um, which Ashley Stevens is in charge of that, and I talked to her last night. I think she's going to come speak to you all soon, so mm -hmm. I'll let her, her cover that. But um, that's another program. Like, we get done with hours. Me and Ashley pass people back and forth a lot. Um, if you're done with one of our programs, you could probably go to the other, depending on her fiscal year and what kind of funding she has. Any other questions? Yep, Ashley will be here August 27th. Okay. Yeah, and we talked to Venetia about this in general. If you have one of these packets, I can't pick it up, sorry. Um, if you have one of these packets, um, me and Ashley were, were talking the other day about maybe coming and giving like a demo at some point of what this portal is, but this packet is actually just kind of like a preview of uh, a portal that we purchased during, um, during COVID, and it is an educational platform for caregivers. It's powered by TrueAlta, so we'll use those interchangeably. It's TrueAlta or the caregiver portal, um, but it just basically the state bought it. So we have it pretty much in all of the counties in North Carolina. So if you have a caregiver in Raleigh that wants access to it, we can get them on there. Um, it's all over the state. But there is all kinds of information in here on the back of it, broken down into categories, and it's even been updated since then. They update it all the time. Um, there is a lot of really good information in there specific to dementia, specific to stroke prevention, fall prevention, um, and there's a lot of practical things. I used to have people call and say, like, I want to know how to lift my mom without hurting my back. There are things like that in there. So a lot of, like, hands-on information for caregivers, too. So really good information. If you do want to log in, just shoot me an email or a text on this one. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, they also, we hold that up because they also look like this. That's just us switching from one to another. So, but same thing, yep. And Katie uh, gave me a ton of resources last month. And right outside of this door, there's a table out here full of other resources as well. So you'll see some pamphlets, some booklets, and all kinds of stuff. So make sure before we head to do the sip and paint that you all look at these resources out here on this table. Does anybody not have a business card that needs one? Or do you need to pass one along to somebody else? How many do you need? I need two. Two. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. The only thing on that that is not going to be up to date is the address, but I don't think you guys are just going to show up. If you do, it's fine, but I probably won't be there. Because so. <laughs> we're moving, so that's all. <coughs> Anything else? I know I talk like a million miles an hour, so do I have questions? I'll give Katie a testimony. <laughs> So I cared for my mother long distance. I was here in Mecklenburg. She was Mount Pleasant, about an hour away. During COVID, I gave her COVID. What a wonderful daughter. So I had COVID. She had COVID. I couldn't take care of her. I was a wreck. I was crying to her all the time. Because I just found out, you know, everything that was going on, and I, I didn't know what to do. So that angel right there, She's like, you know, we got this program, we got all this stuff, and I didn't really understand it. But, you know, not only did she help me emotionally through that, she was very creative. So the neighbor was looking after my mom, and she was on unemployment, so she couldn't get paid. So she's like, we'll fix that, we'll just give her gift cards. So give me gift cards. She's like, you know, what else did your mom need? And she, I'm like, well, her TV doesn't work. Okay, we'll get her TV. Wow. So she's sitting there alone, an hour away. Well, what about Hennessy's wedding? I, okay, that's why I brought that up. Yeah, yeah. So all I'm saying, you know, is it may be a government-funded program, 
but there's a lot of heart that goes into what she does, nice. and a lot of flexibility. So. And it means a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah, she was my best friend for a minute. <laughs> now I got that one. Where is she? Right here. Oh. <laughs> somebody who's over 55, caring for a grandchild full-time, um, has custody or guardianship, those sorts of things, mm -hmm. we can also serve them. Okay. Pay for daycare, that kind of thing. So, thank you all for having me. Thank it was you. nice to put faces with names, and y'all reach out if you need me. Thank you. And I have been, Katie, I have been pushing, like, when people call me or text me, I have been pushing. So you all, please, please, please reach out yes. and get these resources. They're there. So take advantage of yeah, them. Absolutely. Yeah, take advantage so of them. So you're going to be... Yeah, I'll hang out right out here. And Angela, I need to give you boxes. Should I come in the car? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to do another, um, we're going to do another giveaway. Ayanna Brown actually donated some candles, and these smell so good. So um, get ready to pull another ticket. I'm just going to read the last three. Two, six, seven. Like me. It's, let me see. Let me see. You want to Let me see your ticket. <laughs> and, and while I'm here, uh, there are some new people here, and I just wanted to give you a little bit of background of what the Frankie May Foundation uh, does, other than just uh, provides other resources. We actually do grants for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
But we provide membership grants to two other nonprofit organizations. One is the Charlotte Village Network, and the other one is Senior Community Connections. Senior Community Connections is for families in Huntersville, Cornelius, Davidson, and Lower Forestville. Charlotte uh, Village Network is for families in Charlotte. What they do is they provide companion care. They'll come in, they will sit with your loved one, they'll pick your loved one up, take them to the doctor, hairdresser. They do a grocery store run once a week. They do light housekeeping. They do uh, minor home repairs. They'll do yard work. And if it's a, a repair that you can't do, you know, it's, it's more than a minor home repair, they have their own network of contractors. And if you're a member of the Village Network, the contractor will automatically give you at least a 10% discount. <laughs> and so there's a membership fee for these. Well, that's where Frankie Mae Foundation steps in. We will pay that membership fee. And I'm happy to announce that um, we uh, signed her family on in February with the uh, Senior Community Connection. She lives up in the northern part of the county. And we got our first family under Charlotte Village Network this week, Yolanda's family. So we're paying a membership for her, her family. So the money is there. We need people to apply for this membership. And how much is the membership if someone wanted to sponsor or donate? It's it's um it's different for senior uh, for I'm sorry for senior community connections. Theirs is two hundred and fifty dollars a year. With uh, Charlotte Village Network, you can break it down into monthly payments, and they have two tiers. One is for an individual, which is forty five dollars a month, or the family is sixty seven dollars a month. So Charlotte Village Network, so we pay the, the monthly fee. With Senior Community Connections, theirs is just a one-time fee. They don't do monthly payments. So we just pay the monthly fee, I mean the yearly payment for that. So that's, and that's another reason I'm pushing hard for donations. You know, when people pay, we're able to pay for these, for these memberships, for these families. So, and I was meaning to give you this book. It's, um, I met this lady on the internet. Her mother passed away from um, Alzheimer's, and she and I have been just good friends over social media. But she actually wrote about her mother's journey with um, Alzheimer's, and she actually, and I had the page marked, she actually did a write-up in the book about Mama. So Mama is actually featured in her book. And uh, there's some bookmarks out there on the resource table. Uh, with her information, so if anybody wants to get this book, Mama is on page 160, but yeah, so she got my permission to use something about Mama in her book, so. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> person that needs the, the help, it's just an individual. So if it's more than one person that needs, yeah. So, okay, um, next ticket. Last three digits, 244. Four. All right, so you got this nice 
this month, <laughs> she got, we gave one away last month, and I was going to keep it for myself, but I did, and I got it. And then this bag, actually, you can stick it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then in this bag, this is all from Central Line of Katie's organization. She got masks, a nightlight, and I really was going to keep this. <laughs> Yeti, so all this stuff, that bag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's it for um, this part. If anybody needs to see Katie before we head on over, I'm not going. Y'all can keep eating. We we doing good on time. We, we're doing good on time. But if y'all want to keep eating, any other questions for me or Katie or just general comments? Any other questions? Everybody quiet eating now. <laughs> Oh, and um, yeah, so I, like I said, I'm going to do some more giveaways when we do the sip and paint. But you all, after you finish eating, if nobody needs to see Katie, in a little bit we're going to transition right over into the gym where we have stuff set up for the sip and paint. Benitra, can you tell me the name of the two, the last two things that you guys sponsored the membership? Charlotte Village Network is the one in Charlotte. And then Senior Community Connections is the one that services Huntersville, Cornelius, Davidson, and Lower Mooresville. And what did they do? They do, um, it's companion care. Like they will come, they will come to the house, they will do light housekeeping, they will cook, they will do minor home repairs, they'll do yard work, uh, they do grocery store runs once a week, and um, and it's nothing medical, so they won't get medication, they won't do shower and dressing, anything like that. So it's just pretty, it's companion care. And the Frankie Mae Foundation pays for that membership. And again, if it's a, if it's a home repair that requires more than just changing out the, the thing in the toilet or whatever, it's something major, they have contractors that they have in their network that they will do the, uh, if you decide to go with them, they give you at least a 10% discount for being a member of the network. And we pay that, we pay that monthly membership. Frankie Mae Foundation isn't concerned with whether you get something from from Katie's organization or if you get something from BSS or whatever. We aren't concerned with that. Anybody else? And Angela also has, um, you want to tell them about um, tomorrow? And I'll send the Zoom link out for tomorrow. Over the Caregiver TLC. Yeah. Yeah. There's something called Caregiver TLC, which is a virtual program. Uh, that we started with some grant money from one of the big um, retirement communities, and it's from UNC Charlotte. The gerontology department is very involved in the community, and it's a six-week session online um, to help family caregivers and friends to relieve stress. It provides resources, and it's kind of like a support group, but much more. Um, and it gives you strategies and just sharing information and then after that the thing that she was referring to we don't just say oh you're done now bye six weeks is finished we do something called continuing conversations so I've been doing a, quite a few of those and um, tomorrow's theme we're going to talk about dementia but it's not all about Alzheimer's disease oftentimes you know everyone else feels, feels like the poor relation if you've got Louis body or <coughs> vascular dementia. So we're going to talk about the different dementias and then messages from people who are living with it. So um, a little bit of education, but a lot of conversation. And it's really heartwarming. We stay on, it's about two hours and we stay on and they ask questions, sometimes they complain. But <laughs> then you get ideas from each other. So it's a safe place. And then maybe one day we'll do it in person. So that's tomorrow afternoon. So thanks for sharing that. Join us for sure. I have a question. Um, 
Is there an internship program along with UNCC's gerontology department? They have to, the person to contact is Dr. Cynthia Hancock. Um, they do have students there as well now. Is that what you're thinking you'd like to receive one? Well, or be one? No. And like, like a paid internship. I do, yes, there are some. There's one lady that's part of this group, I forgot my last name, her name is Amy. She's working at one of the big retirement communities and it's a deal that she's made with them. There's a paid internship. She is a gerontology student. They have two programs, a certificate in gerontology, which is great. A lot of marketing people do that and it's very good um, and it's prestigious. Or you can go ahead and do your full blown master's um, program. And who do you contact? Dr. Cynthia Hancock. And Angela, if you want to, e I can email it to her if you want me to. Um, yeah, I was going to say, she, I don't want, yeah. I'll email you. Email, okay, yeah. and then I'll email it to you. They're doing great things. Um, they're out in the community. Uh, Katie went through their big program. Katie Bauer. And I will say, I sat through um, your one and her for, uh, continuing conversations, and even if your loved one doesn't have dementia, it is still some really good information, because I learned some stuff just from sitting on there, and mama had dementia, but I learned some stuff just from sitting on there, so even if it's not dementia related, it can cross over to whatever your caregiving needs are, so just. And that's it, because like you know, there's lots of misinformation, so sometimes our job is just like, get the record straight, <laughs> and then just, Living well. So in April, I'll be presenting Dementia Friends, mm -hmm. which is huge, and it piggybacks onto what you said. We want to make sure Harris Teeter, the banks, other people get rid of the stigma and just make a dementia friendly chart map mm -hmm. above and beyond. So um, you'll all go away with a pin and a certificate mm -hmm. if you show up. So that's ne next month. That will be our yeah. monthly meetup. So dress up in your little your tea outfits. <laughs> <laughs> And a, have you heard of Ashton Applewhite? Have you heard of her? She's a woman who's, I don't, she looks like she's over 65, so she's in the 55 plus. She uh, is a national to bringing her, so I just wrote a letter of recommendation because I'm doing it from the dementia piece, you know. It's not the end of your life, you just have to live well and be mm -hmm. supportive, get rid of the stigma. And that used to happen, if you recall, with cancer. Cancer, you couldn't even say that word around people. I think you said that, yeah. exactly. Yeah. True. So that's what we, so you are definitely got to join that Dementia Friends movement. I was in Steinmark before it closed down, before COVID, and I actually had been to a session, and um, a lady stopped me, she saw the badge, and I sat with her in the changing rooms of Steinmark. <laughs> Helping her, giving her resources, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. but that's what happened. I, I didn't buy anything, I just was. Um, <laughs> but I was giving her things like Central Line, I could give her the curve of the TLC information. So it's having a conversation and helping people not to be afraid. Everybody's you're not in it alone. Everybody's yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there's so much misunderstanding. Um, people can live a long time. There's a wonderful man, you've heard of him, Michael Ellen Bogan, who's now in his early 60s. He had the symptoms of Alzheimer's from about age 39. He was fired from his job because he thought he was losing it. Well, actually, to be dementia friendly, you're supposed to enable people and do a little pivot and give them a job that they're able to do. That's what society should do, instead of just Get pushing it to the side. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So he's a big advocate, so we're talking about him a little bit. I've not met him one on one, but I've seen him on Zooms and I've chatted and to him chat with him too. <coughs> and but and Vanessa actually spoke last month and it's on a, we started a YouTube channel. So her uh speak, her doing her engagement last month is on our YouTube channel and I'll upload Katie's today, yours next month. So it will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, so you can go back and look at it. Again. What's the channel? It's Frankie May Foundation. Okay. So yeah, your, your name, Frankie May, and your name is out there. Oh, let me show my shoes in case anybody didn't see you. It's on the shoes. But we're pushing Benita to be one of the facilitators.